Hello, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast. I'm so glad you could join me. This podcast, I'm going to share with you um, a story that our son James narrated. In fact, he narrated a book called Stories Worth Rereading, 72 Heart-Touching Stories. And it is available, you know, on all the various audiobook platforms as well as it's available through the Oikos site as an ebook or a physical book. But what I thought is to share the stories with you here on these podcasts because they're short stories and, you know, ranging anything from a few minutes to 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share one of those stories with you for you to listen to and perhaps your children can listen to it and I just hope that it will be an encouragement to you. I hope that you'll be able to take something from the story that will be good, something good for you today. That's what I hope. I have been very aware of how much is going on around us that just doesn't feel good, doesn't seem good, doesn't sound good. So I just hope that these stories will bring some good to you. That's the idea. That's the hope. So let me not go on and let me just leave you to listen to the story narrated by James. Little Corners Georgia Willis, who helped in the kitchen, was rubbing the knives. Somebody had been careless and let one get rusty. But Georgia rubbed with all her might, rubbed and sang softly a little song. In the world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Why do you rub at the knives forever? asked Mary. Mary was the cook. Because they are in my corner, Georgia said brightly. You in your small corner, you know, and I in mine. I will do the best I can. That is all I can do. I would not waste my strength, said Mary. I know that no one will notice. Jesus will, said Georgia, and then she sang again. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Cooking the dinner is in my corner, I suppose, said Mary to herself. If that child must do what she can, I suppose I must. If Jesus knows about knives, it is likely that he does about dinners. And she took particular pains. Mary, the dinner was very nicely cooked today, Miss Emma said. That is all due to Georgia, said Mary, with a pleased face. Then she told about the knives. Miss Emma was ironing ruffles. She was tired and warm. Helen will not care whether they are fluted or not, she said. I will hurry them over. But after she heard about the knives, she did her best. How beautifully my dress is done! Helen said. Emma, laughing, answered, That is owing to Georgia. Then she told about the knives. No, said Helen to her friend who urged, I really cannot go this evening. I am going to prayer meeting. My corner is there. Your corner? What do you mean? Then Helen told about the knives. Well, the friend said, If you will not go with me, perhaps I will with you and they went to the prayer meeting. You helped us ever so much with the singing this evening, their pastor said to them as they were going home. I was afraid you would not be here. It was owing to our Georgia, said Helen. She seemed to think she must do what she could, if it were only to clean the knives. Then she told him the story. I believe I will go in here again, said the minister, stopping before a poor little house. I said yesterday there was no use, but I must do what I can. In the house a sick man was lying. Again and again the minister had called, but the invalid would not listen to him. Tonight the minister said, I have come to tell you a little story. Then he told him about Georgia Willis, about her knives and her little corner, and her doing what she could. The sick man wiped the tears from his eyes and said, I will find my corner too. I will try to shine for Jesus. And the sick man was Georgia's father. Jesus, looking down at her that day, said, She hath done what she could, and gave the blessing. 
I believe I will not go for a walk, said Helen, hesitantly. I will finish that dress of mother's. I suppose I can if I think so. Why, child, are you here sewing? her mother said. I thought you had gone for a walk. No, mother, this dress seemed to be in my corner, so I thought I would finish it. In your corner? her mother repeated in surprise. And then Helen told about the knives. The doorbell rang, and the mother went thoughtfully to receive her pastor. I suppose I could give more, she said to herself, as she slowly took out the ten dollars she had laid aside for missions. If that poor child in the kitchen is trying to do what she can, I wonder if I am. I will make it twenty-five dollars. And I seemed to hear Georgia's guardian angel say to another angel, Georgia Willis gave twenty-five dollars to our dear people in India today. Twenty-five dollars, said the other angel. Why, I thought she was poor. Oh well, she thinks she is. But her father in heaven is not, you know. She did what she could, and he did the rest. But Georgia knew nothing about all this, and the next morning she brightened her knives and sang cheerily. In the world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. From the Pansy I do hope that you are able to gain something good from that story. And just a reminder that if you do want more of these stories, as I mentioned before, they are available through a physical book and an e-book and an audio book, all 72 stories. So again, thank you for listening. I hope you got something good from this. And I also hope that you have a very, very good week. And I hope you enjoyed the next podcast that we will be bringing your way. Until then, thank you so much and be blessed.